Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. 2013 complex number question. Z is equal to 4 over 1 plus root 3i is a complex number where i squared is equal to minus one. A verified that z can be written as one minus root three i. So what they're examining here is that you can divide in a Cartesian form, rectangular form, okay? The last question we did, we, we, we just had a quick look at how you would divide using De Marvis theorem, or I should say in polar form. Um, this one is how do you divide in Cartesian form? So z is equal to 4 over 1 plus root 3i. There's a rule in maths that states that you're not allowed to divide by an imaginary number. So therefore, we have to get rid of imaginary numbers from the bottom line. So how you do that is you multiply the bottom line by its conjugate. Okay, And what that means is that you change the sign here in front of the imaginary part. And you'll see if you multiply, well, you'll see it in a minute. Okay, why do we do that? Now, I'll, I'll come back to the top line in a minute, but why do we multiply the bottom line? So I'm gonna multiply it out. One by one is one. One by minus root three i is minus root three i. Plus root three i by one is plus root three i. Um, plus root three i by minus root three i, well, let me do that in bits, plus by minus is a minus, root three by root three is three, and i by i is i squared, okay? So what you'll see in, in happening is that the two imaginary numbers at the bottom, you see the two numbers with the i, they cancel. I squared is not treated, it is not an imaginary number. In fact, it, once we sub in the minus one for I squared, that is actually a real number. So you can see I'm only left with real numbers on the bottom, the imaginary has canceled. So that is why we have to multiply the bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. Okay, you are not allowed to divide by imaginary numbers in maths, so you must remove them. Okay, now what you do to the bottom, you must also do to the top. Okay, so what am I essentially multiplying by here? Well, you're essentially multiplying by one. Okay, any number over itself, 10 over 10 is one. Okay, one minus root three i over one minus root three i is one. So in fact, I'm only multiplying this original equation by one. So I'm not really changing it. I'm just rewriting it in, in different mathematical format. Okay, so on the top then, you multiply this number by this number. So four times one is four, four by minus root three i is four root three i. Okay, so you end up getting four minus four root three i, and on the bottom I have one minus three times minus one. So basically I've subbed in the minus one for i squared there. So it's equal to four minus four root three i over one plus three. Okay, so that ends up being a plus three. So I end up having four on the bottom. Okay, um, and what you end up doing is dividing the four into both fours here. Let me break it out so you can see it. I have four over four minus four root three i over four. So I've broken it out into its real part and its imaginary part. And four over four is one, and four over four root three i over four is one, or just root three i. Okay, so that is how that number z can be written as one minus root three i. Multiply above and below by the conjugate of the bottom. Okay, plot z on an argand diagram and write z in polar form. So obviously this is the one that we're going to plot. So z is equal to one minus root three i. So onto my calculator, I'm putting root three so I can decimalize that and try and plot it. So um, root three is 
is like that and that is only to allow me to plot it. So 1 minus 1 1.7. That's 1 1.5, so about halfway down there. So that is the complex number there about Z. Okay, so that's it plotted on an argon diagram. So real on the X axis, imaginary on the Y. So in polar form, okay, so you can see it's in the fourth quadrant. Uh, that doesn't matter for R. Let's work out how far is it out from the origin. So how far is that out from the origin? So that's my R. So it's equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, assuming any complex number is x plus yi. So my x is 1, so it's the square root of 1 squared plus, and my y is minus root 3. So for that, I'm getting the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Okay. Let's work out my angle. And, and like we said in the last question, your angle, my reference angle up there is always formed with the x-axis, okay? So that's actually your triangle that we're using for this one, that we're using for this one. Um, so it is opposite over adjacent, okay? So it is equal to the tan inverse of root three over one. Okay, so the, the formula for theta, so I'm gonna write them up the top, or is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta is equal to the tan inverse of y over x, okay? So that's where I got my root three over one. You'll notice I didn't put the minus into it. I don't ever do it like that. I use the minus for location. So put that into your calculator. So root three over, and I'm getting 60 degrees. Okay, um, when you're doing complex numbers, your angle that you actually care about though, goes from the positive sense of the x-axis. So you'll do 360 degrees, your actual angle minus 60 degrees, so it'll be 300 degrees. Okay, so in polar form then, you write your complex number as uh, or, cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, I'm taking that from the log tables here. So write it as or cos 300 degrees plus i sine 300 degrees. Okay, so that's it in polar form. And then the last part of the question asks you to apply De Marvis theorem. So here it is in the log tables. De Marvis theorem, when you have to do a power, this is what you follow, okay? Don't heed the bit on the end. So when something is to a power, take or to the power and multiply the angle by, by the power, okay? So our complex number, one minus root three i was two cos 300 degrees plus i sine 300 degrees, okay? And the question says to, to work out z to the power of 10. So it's two cos 300 degrees plus I sine 300 degrees, all to the power of 10. So DeMarv is telling you, do I or to the power of 10 or, yeah, or to the power of 10. And then it's saying 10 times the angle. So it's cos 10 times 300 degrees plus I sine 10 times 300 degrees. Okay, so let's work that out. Um, what is our answer going to be? Right, let's work him out. So two, the numbers could be quite big. So I'm going to do this bit first, let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I'm doing now is going to mess around with this to make it look like this up the top, okay? Um, so 
So I am getting, so I'm just going to put this in a brackets, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm working out the two parts cos of 3000 degrees by minus a half, okay? Plus I times, and I'm going to do sine 3000 degrees, okay? I'll explain to you what I'm doing in a second. And I'm getting root three over two for that. Okay, so what I've done, just to explain what I'm doing, okay? Because um, in many cases like this, you, you, you'll be able to bring the sum to a certain amount. Okay, just like I've done there. So I've applied to Marvis theorem and now I'm looking at it and I'm looking back at how they want my answer. And I'm, going, I'm kind of going, right, how do I make this look like that? OK, um, so so what I'm doing is I'm seeing they're leaving the two to the power of something outside. OK. I have a change to one or two, four. Now, in hindsight, I think I should have left that at two to the power of 10, but that's OK. I can go back there. And in the inside brackets, that's back to rectangular form. So in other words, to get that part, you do cause of your angle. OK, and to get this part with the eye on it, you do sine of your angle. So that's what I've done here. OK, so so let's go back. Let's change him as two to the power of 10, because that does indeed look a little bit better than um, one or two, four. OK, and we have minus a half plus um, root three over two I. OK, so I haven't really done anything there. I've got rid of the brackets and I've just moved the eye over there to match here. So now I'm still looking up here and I'm trying to see, can I make it look like this? So the first thing I see is the minus on the outside and this number has changed to a plus. So let's take our minus on the outside. So in other words, change the signs all the way across. So he ends up being minus two to the power of 10, a half minus root three over two I. OK, so you can see that plus by minus is the same as minus by plus. And I have minus by minus. That also gives me my plus here. So they are mathematically the same. OK, now, how do I make him two to the nine and get rid of the twos at the bottom? Well, the last thing they're doing is cancelling one of the twos here to leave you with nine and cancelling the twos here. OK, to give you minus two to the nine times one minus root three i, which is what you were asked to show. OK, so it might take you a little bit of messing around and a little bit of trial and error when you get your answer a certain bit to um, to make it look like the answer. But just keep going with it, keep messing around and seeing where it brings you. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.